In this video, I got a lot to share with you. I'm gonna cover my new monitoring equipment that I got, how I'm using it, and how it's benefiting me in the grow room. I'm gonna show you what two weeks in air atomizing aeroponics can do for your roots. Then we'll take a look at the time-lapse video and how the monitoring equipment is helping me collect data so I can make changes in the grow room. The latest addition to the garden is a CO2 meter I purchased off of Amazon. Now there are many types of CO2 meters out there on the market, some more accurate than others, detectors, measuring devices, wall mounts, handheld, desktop, battery operated, AC, data loggers, sensors that are hooked up to the PC for personal use, commercial and industrial. Now for me, I started to look for one because I was concerned since I'm growing in such a confined space that there wasn't gonna be adequate air exchange. I wanted to find a way to monitor what a typical day would look like. I didn't need the best of the best, I just needed something to get me in the ballpark. I wasn't planning on spending $500 at this stage. Maybe in the future, when I set up a larger grow area, I will. Typically, you hear about how growers seal off rooms and pump CO2 to aid in the speed of growth. For me, I'm attempting to learn what it really takes to control the indoor environment. You always hear about how growers run into humidity and temperature issues. That being said, after doing a bit of research and seeing what other growers were using, I knew what I didn't want. I didn't want a unit that displayed in micromoles, milligrams per deciliter or percentage. So PPM it was. Then I came across a grower on YouTube who praised this unit. It seemed like it had everything I needed. It didn't quite have the best reviews and the price point was a bit more than what I was thinking. But what it did have was a large display, an AC plug as you can see, with every adapter you can imagine, the time, the date, a hygrometer, and temperature. There was another unit which was lower in cost, but again, mixed reviews and a hard to read display. Also, the biggest thing for me was it was backlit, and I felt that that was gonna be a problem during the dark cycle. Here's a look at the unit I passed on. The unit I picked up was around $100. There are a few models of similar build out there. They all run for about the same money, and I just figured they're all probably coming out of the same factory, just rebranded. So as far as quality goes, I figured they're about the same. The first thing I liked about the unit was no batteries. Next was the large CO2 display, followed by the temperature and humidity. Lastly, key for me was the date and time. Having all this in one package was about to make my life a lot easier. The ease of use was a plus. Setup was pretty straightforward. Press the set button upwards, hold for a few seconds until display menu changes. The P1 setting was for setting your CO2 alarm levels. The P2 setting is for setting up the units to your preference for things like Celsius to Fahrenheit. The P3 setting is for your date and time. As with many other devices, Use your arrows to increase or decrease, then tap the set button to switch categories. Once you are done, press escape to exit. Now the only thing to do is to find a location in the grow room. Before moving on to the time lapse and explaining how I'm using this, I want to show you guys what two weeks in an air atomizing aeroponic system can do for your root system. Here we're starting at day 14 as our baseline, then jumping to day 28. It's clear to see the progress that was made in the first two weeks. Now, I'll take you from day 28 to day 40, which is just 12 more days. I'm gonna sit back and let you guys take it all in. Just keep in mind, this is just 12 days later.
just to give you guys some perspective, my root chamber is actually 33 inches long by 18 inches wide by 15 inches high. For those of you across the pond, this works out to be 83 by 45 by 38 centimeters. In order to film this time lapse, I was required to use a green LED. Now there's some controversy out there as to whether or not green light will actually awaken the plant to begin photosynthesis. It can get very discouraging when you think you're asking a simple question, but the reality of it is solid information is difficult to find. When you Google something, you'll usually find an article written by somebody that's going to benefit. On YouTube, there's tons of information, but it's hard to distinguish who's trying to sell you something and who's trying to get views. Here's an article by Michigan State University where they actually tested a light spectrum between 300 and 800 nanometers. Depending on how you key in your search is going to determine the outcome. All I know when it comes to the visible light spectrum, plants can see better than we do. But at this point, I felt like I had no choice, so I went ahead and grabbed the bulb. Here's a hot tip for you. When you go to the big box store, make sure you open the package before you make a purchase. As you can see, I had to go back to the store and exchange it. Okay, we're in the home stretch now. What I was originally looking for was making sure that I had enough fresh air exchange so my CO2 levels would not drop below ambient. After tracking this for several days, I was convinced that I was good. Now, if you're wondering how the hell are those numbers shooting up so high, here's another tip for you. Okay, here it goes. Get a dog or two that loves to sleep near the grow area. I'm not running a sealed room, and when the exhaust fan cycles, it draws in the CO2 from beneath the door. I was running the standard 18.6 light cycle before this video, but because of this video, it made me rethink things. It's said by many that during the veg cycle, you can run your lights 24-7. Well, based on my observation, it sure looks like this plant has hit the light saturation point and was shutting down while the lights remained on for another three and a half hours. And when it goes green, this is officially the start of the dark cycle. Something I've been trying to confirm is, it appears as though the plant is beginning to wake up before the dark cycle is actually over. Something I've been monitoring is, only during transpiration will the plant uptake CO2. Maybe it's just a coincidence, but you'll see the plant starting to liven up while the CO2 begins to drop. If this turns out to be true then, for me, I'll be convinced that plants do use the green spectrum to conduct photosynthesis and I can shorten the dark cycle in order to expedite my growth. Coming up, you'll see an arrow pop up as the CO2 levels begin to decrease. And in case you missed it earlier in the video, you'll see the opposite take place when the plant decides to shut down when the lights are still up. To me, this is indicating that the plant is no longer processing the CO2. Don't forget to subscribe if you like content like this, because this is just the beginning of the journey.